What's up everybody? Welcome back to FNG Academy. I just had a quick announcement. I'm proud to say that we've been helping people get selected for three years now. I've been getting a lot of messages about uh, people thanking us and saying that they just graduated from uh, selection and they got selected. Uh, people graduating the Q course. Uh, one of my buddies just sent me a video uh, from the Charlie committee. He asked, if you guys have ever heard of the FNG Academy, raise your hands. And all their hands went up and it just filled me with pride. Um, so part of the way that we do that is making sure that you guys are physically fit and ready for selection. And the way we've been doing that for the past couple years is by sending you to a Green Beret we know and trust, Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. So if you want to get selected, you need to be in the best shape possible and you need a programmer who knows what they're talking about. So go check out Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. Use code word BUCK to get a discount. Tell him we sent you and hook you up. Congrats to everyone who's been getting selected lately and we'll see you guys on the next one. What's up guys? Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. In this episode, we're doing a pretty cool one. I think it's an amazing movie actually, The Equalizer. This one's kind of just like slid by. Like obviously I've, I've watched it and knew that I really liked it. Mm -hmm. But we never thought to review it, even though it's essentially just another John Wick. I think that's why we didn't think to review it. It's just a redundant movie, so it doesn't stand out to us. We're not like, oh, we need to do something different with it. Let's let's pick this movie. It's like, yeah. what, like, what things are you really going to say different about this movie that you haven't already said in John Wick? Because it's essentially sort of unrealistic fight scenes is what's going on most of the time. Yeah, well, what do you think is better, John Wick or this? John Wick, hands down. Which is crazy because... We, I tried to look it up and I was like, who copied who, right? It's like somebody, mm -hmm. one of them must have came first and then the other one must have copied it because they're so <laughs> identical. I looked it up, they're both made at the same time. As a matter of fact, one came out in September of 2014. The other one came out in October. So they re literally released almost simultaneously. Mm. And then it's like, oh, well, you had the theory that maybe one was being shopped around and then the idea got stolen? Yeah, or just seen. So like I saw a video once where there was um, somebody broke down why a lot of similar movies come out all the time. And one example of that is like Olympus Has Fallen. And I don't know the name of the other one, but it's essentially the same premise, right? There's a president, uh, the White House gets attacked, they go on lockdown, and then the guy has to get him out. One of them's with Channing Tatum, the other one's with Gerard Butler. Mm -hmm. And they're both the exact same thing. And I guess what happens is, is like people shop around scripts and stuff and then other people see it. So then they know this movie is going to get made and they're like, hey, we should probably jump on this and capitalize because it looks like a good script. They just don't want to agree to the terms of, from the other movie. They don't want to pay that much. They don't want that actor. So they'll make their own. Yeah, and that's a potential what happened here because if, then if you look at budget, this one was $55 million to make and John Wick was $30 million to make. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a massive difference. Yeah. So maybe they were like, hey, we could do uh, Equalizer without these star casts yeah. and use just one guy and then the rest of them is essentially nobody's. Mm -hmm. No disrespect if there is somebody that was an actor <laughs> in there. But essentially non-famous actors is where the equalizer, you got the guy from who's a, um, an Avenger now, the Russian guy. He's like a Russian Avenger. Remember Which guy? That? Um, damn, and then he's also the dad in Stranger Things. That guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like a Russian... Yeah, I don't know his name. I know you're talking about. Superhero. There's the cop from Stranger Things. Though. The cop from Stranger Things is in this one. Uh, so, what's his name? Uh, damn, what's the main actor's name in this? I'm so bad with names. Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington. So, you have, like, a pretty... And then the bad guy's a really famous actor. Mm -hmm. And he's a really solid actor. So, it's essentially John Wick with a star-studded cast right. for an action movie. Right. And did it pay off? Unfortunately, not. I don't think it really did. I don't think this hit at all. No one talks about this movie. No. no matter how much it's out there, no one, it flew under the radar and John Wick took the cake on everything. I mean, it, it just massively. Yeah, yeah. I think John Wick leaned into the fact that, hey, it's like, okay, they leaned into their weaknesses, right? right. It's like, okay, if we don't have the star studded cast, what do we do? Let's avoid heavy dialogue. Let's avoid um, all the things you get from these really talented actors mm -hmm. and lean into some just really, really cool shit. Yeah. And it just panned out for him. Right. Which, I, honestly, if I was sitting there watching both of them saying which one's going to hit, I would always run with Denzel Washington. Yeah. Like, there's no way I'd, like, pick Keanu Reeves over Denzel Washington. Yeah, especially when you when you realize Keanu Reeves says, like, three words yeah. every, like, half hour of the movie. Right. Right? As to where Denzel can 
act, my dude. Yeah, like, he that is guy kills crazy it. Crazy good actor. And so there's scenes in here that could be in any movie, like Oscar winning scenes with him speaking because he's just so talented. Right. And then you got John Wick's like, oh, I'm thinking I'm <laughs> back. All right. Well, without further ado, we're not movie critics, so you didn't need that spiel. Let's jump into the tactics and see how realistic these tactics are. Because at the end of the day, whether the movie is based on crazy premises or not, they're still having to use tactics. So I like how people look, get in the comments and like, oh, I like how you're breaking this down. What's next? Like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Yeah. It's like, no, you're still having to use tactics. There's still people doing tactical things which could or could not be realistic. Yeah. I mean, John Wick does a lot of realistic. Mm -hmm. So it's not unusual for you know someone from a tactical background to break down a movie like this it it because a lot of the things it's like oh this is more accurate than you might imagine sure yeah so, cool let's jump into the first scene and see what's up let's do it i'm drinking a man ipa stone fml this is my favorite beer by far comment down below if you guys agree it's the tall silver cans strong tastes really really good i highly recommend you enjoy this on this fine sunday morning mm. of beers and breakdowns <laughs> Yo, Denzel's so fire, dude. Bro. He's menacing. I yeah. never realized how mean he can look when yeah. he just we, every time they stopped and he's standing there, he's like just waiting for the guy to do the next move, and he's just staring so at evil. him. It's what menacing. I think that Den, what they did so amazing in this movie with the fight scenes is Denzel Washington only. I think that may be the only round he shoots in this entire movie. Oh, I didn't even catch it. He he. This literally he shot shoots the bad guy in the neck. I'm pretty sure it's the only bullet he fires during this entire movie. I may be wrong, and maybe there's like one other one, but trust me, he does not touch guns this whole movie. Yeah. He just completely avoids guns. I don't know. He's got a thing, right? Every assassin, I guess, has to have their thing. His thing is don't touch guns. He doesn't want to shoot people. Right. So he just uses the environment always, always using He's like a f assassin MacGyver. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> exactly. He's like, what can I use in my environment to kill someone? But I think it makes the scene so much better because so they much have to be better. so creative with it to where it's like, obviously with John Wick, there's a lot of tumbling going on. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of Sambo thrown in there. There's a lot of real fight stuff, but mm -hmm. we're all looking for the crazy headshots, right? Because yeah. he's it's over the shoulder, he's killing people. And this one, it's like, what's he going to use next? Right. And it's so believable because he pre-calculates the things in the room that he wants to use mm -hmm. and then how he's going to use them. So it, it's, and then the moves that he does are very basic. Grab something, hit him in the eye with it as hard as you can. Yeah. It's not like crazy jujitsu moves or judo right. throws. It's just like that could stab him in the face. Then I'm going to grab this and hit him in the face with it. And, but the way they flowed it together too was it, it wasn't like wasted time to where yeah. you're like, dude, just use that multiple times. Right. It's like, it all always makes sense. Like the glass, he put it into the eye and left it in the eye. Yeah. So he's not going to reuse that. So to me, is like a super realistic fight scene, given the fact that he picks a tool, uses the tool, switches to another tool. Yeah. Almost like his primary, secondary, tertiary, his weapons just happen to be random things pre-calculated throughout the room. I know. And it's so creative. It's super sick. But let's bring back a fun segment to the show that we don't always bring back. What would a Green Beret do? I do this every once in a while. So if you had the same guys in the room and you know you're going to attack that guy, you're walking in essentially knowing that he's going to be a jerk mm -hmm. about it, right? And it's going to turn into a fight. How would you then deal with the problem, right? You're surrounded by about six dudes or maybe four dudes, it looks like. No and, way. And you know you're and at this point, let's let's eliminate the movie aspect yeah. of it. He walks to the door on purpose and locks it, right? Which you're obviously not gonna do. Mm -hmm. Real you know, realistically speaking, you probably need to get out. But you have you're at a desk, you have to get to that door, and there's like four dudes in between you and that door. How do you get out? Dude, honestly, I would hope to have some kind of a weapon with me. So right. I would have brought a gun. Uh huh. And then I would have felt pretty confident that I could evaluate who's in the room also with a gun mm -hmm. and shoot them first, knowing that once I shoot one person, they're all going to try to dogpile me because that's the best way to defeat someone with a gun yeah. is multiple hands on that weapon system. So 
then I knew that it's it's Hail Mary to try and get as many shots off before they dogpile me mm -hmm. and try to win that fight. But without a gun in that situation, I'm going to be honest with you, I would lose, and I think most people I know would lose. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I don't think that anyone really would win that situation because it, I could try and calculate that and be like, okay, well, there's that I could hit him with, but that's only one guy. Yeah. And most of the time you, you hit someone with something or you punch them in the face, they don't just knock out. And a lot of times they don't also wait for one to go in, get knocked out, yeah. and then the other one go in. I'm just watching them. Like, yeah. yeah. When's my turn to die? Just, yeah. Just wait. Just exactly. Wait. So from a Green Beret perspective, to me, this is a, an L. Mm -hmm. This is a situation that I am leaving in order to fight another day and not starting this fight at it's, all. It's a non-point. Obviously, you're not going to walk into the lion's den by yourself unarmed. Right. right? It's unlike, You'd have to be a superhero. But I think it's but... a good question because they're like... People think that Green Berets have this, maybe not this level, but they have some level of uh, expertise that's a, that's pretty impressive. And I just don't think that's true 99% of the time. Right. They do add some level of a, because they're so, we're so, we're so in the dark about what you guys can and can't do. And when they throw around so many terms like special forces, elite of the elite, and all this stuff, you kind of add a superhuman quality to that mm -hmm. person. And you walk around with them thinking, man, you could probably fuck up everybody in this room by yourself. Right. And there's just some stuff that isn't true. It's some yeah. stuff that just doesn't happen in real life, regardless of, of who you are. It's not possible. Yeah. We're just people and we get knocked out like everybody else. Right. We yeah. lose fights just like everybody else. So, you know, if you hand me a gun, I will probably be a better shot than most people mm -hmm. that aren't ha, don't have a lot of training or and don't be a, shoot and you'll a be lot. You'll be a lot calmer in the situation. Yes, than most people. Ex that's a good point. Is I'll be calmer. I'll be able to focus on what my course of action is. I'm not going to panic. Um, so that's where the benefit comes in. I do train jujitsu, so I could use some of that. But anyone who trains jujitsu, even if you're a black belt, knows that two guys come after you at the same time, mm -hmm. we're going to get your ass. Yeah. So, like, you could put Tim Kennedy in a room, and I don't care how confident he is, you so throw two people on him at the same time, we're going to win. Right. Because I'm going to go for your legs while someone else goes for your neck. Right. And then you could be winning that fight with that guy, but you can't focus on me at the same time. Right. So two people are just almost always going to beat one person if they're – even have close to the fitness level or even a little bit of fight training. Yeah. So realistic, absolutely not. Give me that ring. No. Give me that ring, I say. Please. Ring. It was my mother's. Your mother. Give me that ring. <laughs> That's rude. That aspect of it's sick. Does he never go back and get the ring? I don't think he does. He does. It's like it's like she opens her drawer and it's in there the next day or something. Oh really? Yeah. Look at that face, dude. It's terrifying. Imagine if that was your dad. <laughs> First of all, this movie gets a little ridiculous that everybody he knows has a traumatic incident. Yeah. It's like one guy he knows, the security guard, is getting completely run down by crooked cops. Then the other chick he knows and likes uh, is getting robbed right. at gunpoint and her mother's ring gets stolen. Yeah. Then the other girl he knows that he... The prostitute that he hangs out with every once in a while in the cafe is getting destroyed by her pimp. So, like, everyone has life-changing events happening to them in his life. Right, right. So, plot needs it to happen. Everyone around you is in constant right. problems. Yeah. And then the funny thing is, like, but what I like about this scene is that he doesn't act. Right. Because, obviously, that would be such a stupid decision for him to do. Mm -hmm. You're on camera at the store. Everyone knows who you are. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, you're, like, beating this guy's ass. Like, yeah. John Wick. Now, you're going to be all over the news as the guy that saved the day, mm -hmm. and you're going to completely blow your spot. Right. So it would be the dumbest decision ever to, to do something in that moment. Yeah. It's also very inaccurate that the, the guy would go to the, these great lengths with a gun over that ring. So I worked at a pawn shop for about like five years, six years when I was a lot younger, and that ring is probably worth like maybe $10, if that. They go by the weight of gold, and that thing obviously didn't have a big ass rock on it that would mm -hmm. make it worth hundreds of dollars. And that guy was not such a rundown crackhead that he's just doing it literally for ten bucks. Yeah. No guy is gonna is gonna pull out a gun and stay there that long just for a ring. over a eight to ten dollar ring because well, you've already got the cash in your hand. Too. Yeah, it's tiny. Like no, they're gonna look at that and leave. I think it's really inaccurate that he would. They should have. They should have made the ring a lot nicer. I think yeah. it's just a gold ring, right? Yeah. It's just it's not gonna bring any money.
So I don't think that somebody would have gone to that level. putting honey on his wound. Why? I didn't realize that either. So I looked it up. <laughs> I was like, honey? So when I saw him boiling the honey, you think like the typical scene where he's boiling something sticky to throw in their face. Yeah. You know, it's like that happens all the time. It's not going to be water so much because it doesn't, it won't last as long. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, honey, that's savage, dude. Yeah. You imagine getting boiling honey in your face? Like that would be horrific. That's no bueno. So maybe it also could be used as that, but... In this case, he's using it to uh, put on his wound, and I've never heard of that before, so I looked it up, and turns out that honey is anti-inflammatory and antibiotic. Mm. Or is it an – yes, anti-inflammatory, antibiotic uh, – let me see. Just <laughs> don't, sure. get, don't get it wrong. Yeah, don't get it wrong. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so I did get it wrong. So anti-inflammatory, antibacterial. Oh, okay. So uh, it will help help cut down on inflammation and help keep the wound clean uh, to avoid infection. So I was like, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. That's good. That. That's good. A random piece of knowledge. It's good to know. Yeah. We and I, that's what I like about movies that do the research is that they could teach you a little bit. Yeah. It's You look at it, you're like, honey, what the fuck? Look it up. And it's like, hey, it's antibacterial. Oh, that's It's, like, it's cool. like not made up nonsense that yeah. would never actually work. It's something that they got from an advisor that's right. true. That's pretty cool. So that's pretty neat. And I thought it was worth talking about. Meclazine. She was for air sickness. A bunch of travel items purchased three days ago. Bought an open ended plane ticket to Mexico two days ago. He's Logan, 10 a.m. tomorrow. The guy knew this was coming. He's on the run. Let's get someone down the Stupid co-ops. He's not going anywhere. What are you talking about? That was a genius setup. Yeah. It's like the, the uh, flight sickness pills. I think it was a little on the chin to do your book, your flights on the computer and leave your computer. Yeah, that was a little that, much. That was too far, but the flight sickness pills was good. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like just the whole setup, letting them think that he was on the run. It's like anyone would come to that conclusion. So the fact that the this other guy's like, he's not going anywhere. He's yeah. watching us. I was like, are you psychic? A little unbelievable. I, I don't think he would have. He has nothing left in the apartment but his laptop. So yeah. Why wouldn't you just take that with you, bro? Take your laptop. Yeah. You're not going to leave that. So maybe make it a little harder, like uh, a thumb drive that's on the floor. So like you're you're running out of the house and you bumped it and it fell on the floor. Mm -hmm. And then they can go back, plug that in and be like, oh, it's flight purchases to New Mex or to Mexico. Yeah. You know, something that's not so on the nose. But I really like the, the um, air sickness medication thing i wouldn't mm -hmm. have thought of that that's pretty funny or that's pretty clever but i just don't understand how the guy's like oh no he's not going anywhere he's actually over there yeah it's like how do you know all that like, where did I you get, get that from? i hate soup <laughs> such a <laughs> stupid thing to eat Yo, that's my note. <laughs> oh, is it really? <laughs> I was like, dude, if I go to my rich friend's house and they feed me a bowl of water. <laughs> like, bro, this isn't food. Yeah, like, where's the steak, dude? You guys are loaded. She has a helicopter landing in her backyard and you literally feeding me a bowl of broth. I'll never understand people like, just sit how, there. Just how long is it going to take to sit there? Like, bitch, I'm going to... I'm from the hood, dude. I'm sipping that bitch from the bowl. Like, is there right, any left next? for little Timmy? <laughs> right? It's like, what are you guys rationing your food and diluting shit in water or eating it with a spoon? I've never seen soup. Maybe it's because my wife's Hispanic, but I've never seen soup just pure water. Mm -mm. When I eat soup, that full of chicken, it's rice in it, vegetables, and it's like a stew. That was literally just a bowl of water. Yeah. And they're getting full. 
And they're just so, and then this guy, poor guy, just traveled all this way to be like, "Oh, this is really good. Thank you guys with all this money. This is what you feed me." It's like that dinner was. I'm gonna have to pee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I don't pee all that out at once. <laughs> like, like, guy, give me some lamb chops, bro. You're like millionaires. <laughs> lamb chops. Let me get something exotic. You know, I want some <laughs> tiger up in this. Give me a like a. I want you to pull a shark on the table or some chick. Like live with covered in sushi. I don't know what rich people do, but yeah. you're you got a helicopters laying in your backyard. Don't feed me water. Fucking nuts, fuck. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you play such a spaz in this, dude. Got a man on it. Yeah. He says your guys are incredibly loyal toward you. They'll do anything you say. So if you tell them to put their guns down, lay down on the floor with their hands behind their back, they'll do that, won't they? This guy's strung out as fuck. Indulge me, Andre. Oh. Yeah. Yo, that, in my opinion, that's accurate. Like, you point that gun at my face, I'm gonna go. F you point it at my. D I'm out, dude. If I'm on, if I'm on enough drugs, and you just put a gun up to him, be like, that feels kind of good. Oh hell no. <laughs> Yo, it's like you can shoot me, but dude, don't shoot me in the penis, bro. I do not want to live the rest of my life without a penis. Stop the bleeding or don't come back. Short enough. Short enough. No! <laughs> oh, it's he's framed up on the screen right now. Who is that man? Damn, Brazil. How do you say his name? <laughs> Brazil. Brazil. There is nothing funner than trying to hear him pronounce words. It's Damn, funny. Brazilian. Brazilian. Bilzerian. Bur. I believe it's B I L Z. Bilzerian. Yeah, Bilzerian. Oh, Bilzerian. Okay, I was saying Brazilian. You used to say it right. You used to call him Bolzerian, and then Bolzerian? you went you went to like Brazilian, Bil Brazilian, <laughs> <laughs> and then you started Yo, just moving away from it further. Bilzerian, Bilzerian. Either way, Dan Bilzerian, Dan f Bilbo Baggins is like <laughs> the f Where's Waldo of action movies. Mm -hmm. It's like when is he gonna randomly show up? And do the shittiest, smallest cameo in existence in cool action movies. It's such a weird thing, too, because he's supposedly such a rich guy. So why would you become such a rich guy and just be like, man, I really hope I get to be an extra in this movie? Right. Like, that's a career in itself for most people. They're trying to work their way up the ladder to become mainstream the, actors. What's the guy with the mustache? Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher yeah, gets a too. way bigger part than you do in this. He gets a lot of big parts in a lot of different movies. He's, somebody he's who, like such a henchman, he's recognizable by now. Yeah, I don't know how you get in that line of work, how you just become a professional henchman. Mm -hmm. He's always a tactical henchman. He's always right. just there and Kit just sitting there. It's like, oh, there he is. <laughs> there he is. Every one. Yeah. Like, I, but, but Dan, like, it's almost like a joke to give him the worst parts imaginable. <laughs> <laughs> like even in Lone Survivor, he got pissed because they just <laughs> cut him out almost entirely. And then in this movie, they show his face for like two seconds and then they kill him immediately. Yeah. So it's almost like I'm telling you, it's like the running joke to probably have him pay you a million dollars and then cut him out as fast as you possibly can. All these movies want to be good movies. They can't give you an actual role and actually keep it as a good movie. It's yeah, not possible. Just, yeah. Like. Unless it's not porn, like if you, <laughs> you're not, not an actor. Like, yeah, you're, you're, not, you're, you're not. You're not making anything better by being there or talking. It's like I thought I was going to get 15 minutes of screen time. It's like, do you mean that you thought the movie was just going to completely fail and you were willing to do that just so you could be in the movie? Bitch, you can't act. Yeah, this is so funny at this point. It's like a, it's just like a running joke within action movies. You can't even convince me you have money <laughs> anymore. Yeah, it's like where'd it come from? Where's your money? Let's see it. Well, it's all gone now. Is it? I don't know anything he claims about it. He claims it's, it, it's not, but it's it's gone. You got to watch the people that claim it is gone. It's like, that's the to me, that's a smart man. Yeah. It's like, I'm poor. It's like, good. That's what I would say. Like, yeah. I don't want people knowing I have money because then they're going to try to come after you. Yeah. It's like, why don't you just keep it to yourself, live all the best life without having to put it on Instagram and show everybody and make yourself a target. Maybe if Conor McGregor would stop flashing all his money, he, people that he hooks up with in bathrooms would stop trying to sue him. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. Well, well I, yeah, but with his status, it's pretty difficult with his to hide status, the fact he, that you have money, yeah. But he doesn't have to keep showboating it. But for definitely for guys like Dan, it's like nobody knows if you got 100 bucks or 10 million, so like, just don't say anything. You said this before, but like it's like everybody who actually happens to have money always drives like a pickup truck. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? So that way nobody knows. It's just you, you could have a lot of money, you could not, but they just drive a truck. Yeah, why make yourself a target? Exactly. It's just a, even if it's a nice truck, it's still just a truck. Mm-hmm. Go, 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 go. Listen, get everybody out of here. Don't leave anybody behind. You use the service doors in the back, okay? Go. He's so kind, yet so brute. Oh, it's Mr. Tate. All right, pause. Yo, as cool as Andrew... Is, is Andrew Tate? What's his name? <laughs> Tate Fletcher. Now, as cool as Tate Fletcher <laughs> looks walking in, the weapon choice in this is... It looks ridiculous to me. Uh, the weapons aren't bad, actually. It's the optic choice. The sights? The sights. It's like, why would you pick a thermal magnifier to run in a warehouse that has emergency lighting in it? It's like, you could see everything. Why don't you just run flashlights? Mm-hmm. Just have your, your red dot have an actual laser, and you could still have uh, light discipline. You don't have to have lights on all the time. Uh, showing everybody where you are. Mm-hmm. You could see intermittently throughout this entire building. So just when you need to see something, like in a dark corner, flash it with white and then let go. Hmm. So then you got a splash of white light, you get to see everything, and then the rest, just keep your eyes used to the dark. Right. And you could see really well in this. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not that dark. And on top of that, like running a thermal optic is a nightmare. Because in order for thermal, thermals to work, usually you have to have an eye cup to block out all the ambient light going inside of it. Yeah. So then you're honing your eyesight down into like this. So it's like looking down a um, toilet paper roll. Yeah. So all your peripheral is gone now. So why would you want an optic where you can't see anything around you just to be able to see what's going on? Either yeah. run nods or run white hot or, or run flashlights. Mm-hmm. If you don't have nods, don't do thermal optics. That's just so stupid. Thermal optics is good for like um, sniper systems sometimes. Occasionally it's good for like uh, grenade launchers. Sometimes it's it, having like a screen, a thermal optic screen is mm-hmm. really good. Like in the uh, vehicles downrange, we had uh, thermal. But again, we're, we're running everything off the gun off a screen. Mm-hmm. And so we could see off the screen. And even that sucked. It's just better to, to either run nods or run uh, flashlights and just have light discipline when you're running a flashlight. You never want to have it on all the time because you're just telling everyone where you are. Yeah. So, But you could just do flashes of it. Flood the area with white and then you could see and then let your eyes readjust back to the dark. It's just so, so much better and easier than the stupid optics that they chose to put on there. Sure. But let's be honest, the entire the ov- the entire tactical decision to have this take place in a big ass hardware store was really stupid from the beginning this guy's supposed to be this mastermind that finds people and takes care of like problems you know Mm -hmm. and then he sets this whole thing up in a home depot it's like why would you well he didn't set it up they kidnapped they kidnapped all the his his co-workers i know in the place. Oh, that guy's the idiot. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, the he's, bad guy's an idiot. He set it up in this hardware. So he's like, hey, I want to lure this guy in who's yeah, clearly very point. good at killing people. And I want to do it in possibly the biggest dark maze possible. Yeah. That's I want like, to give him a lot of space and I want to give him all the tools because clearly he's like on a Home Depot challenge of not killing anyone with a gun. Right. But only using tools from Home Depot. Take him to a warehouse, a very small warehouse with a huge open field in front of it. Wait for him to show up and snipe him from a distance or just launch a rocket at his bitch ass. Like, why would you be like, oh, yeah, come to possibly the most difficult place to fight ever. Right. And I hope we'll win. And then Dan... Dan Baba Yaga's dumbass, <laughs> and, all, and all his little uh, cronies then make another horrible tactical decision and decide, hey, guys, let's split, split up. Split up so this we can a, pick us off one yeah, by one, one. One by one. This is a really smart decision. Right. Instead of moving as an element and clearing in a like a pattern that makes sense, right. and then there's no way that once you come upon him, he may take out one of you, but you're going to get him. Right. But no, let's split up. And then even when we start dropping like flies, let's stay split up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stop flagging me, dickhead. It's like this is where I am.
mustache was like, duh? <laughs> duh? Was ist das? <laughs> Problem? Drill scene was pretty stupid. It's really stupid. It's I'm surprised they went with that given like how good everything else is. Yeah. The drill in the back of the head, as soon as you, that drill touched your head, you'd be like, oh, shit. You'd run. Like, you'd, you'd turn around. You'd get, <laughs> you'd get away from the thing that's drilling into your skin, right? Like, you can't you can't walk up and, like, touch somebody in the neck without them reacting, right? right. You, you're telling me you, I'm just going to be able to sit there and you're just going to stand still and be like, he got me. Oh, he got me. Oh, he's halfway through. <laughs> this guy's got me. He's all, okay, goodbye. Okay. <laughs> Damn it, Fletcher. <laughs> we yeah, that, he lost together. me at the drill scene. But... Don't worry, we have one more really cool scene that is even more ridiculous. Mm. Oh. That's so <laughs> dope, dude. It's cheesy as fuck, but it's so cool. Oh, look at that. Denzel. <laughs> I think they screwed up in calling this the equalizer and then another moving have in the name that this should have been. This should have been the contractor. The contractor? <laughs> the contractor. <laughs> <laughs> nice little play on words. Just run around with DeWalt's and <laughs> Milwaukee's and <laughs> taking people. He's got his contractor belt on with a hammer hanging out the side. <laughs> <laughs> Flips it around. He's like, <sighs> oh, fuck. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode of The Equalizer. If you got this far, thank you so much. Do us a favor, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. We're dropping videos every single Sunday. We got a new uh, podcast coming out. It's going to be pretty awesome. Let us know if you're excited for that. I got a book coming out, Better Broken, in January 2024. We got our boots on the way. Uh, final prototype should be done soon. Uh, I started a flip-flop company, if you want to check that out. Kurt started a, a Formula One channel doing Formula One talk. So if you guys are into that, go check him out. And Abel still hasn't started a secondary business because he thinks that this one is too much as it is. So enjoy. We'll see you guys on the next one.